So last class we were talking about um, the long heat capacity approach, right? That is one of the methods that we will be evaluating to solve for unsteady conduction problems. And we said that this method is an idealization, right? That essentially uh, we consider that at every point of the geometry we are evaluating, the temperature is the same. So we talk about changes of temperature with time, but not with position, right? That's, um, that's the whole simplification of the lump heat capacity approach. And we said that we employ this um, approach to solve unsteady conduction problems when we are uh, having a byte number less, less than 0.1, right? So we solved a very simple problem last class, and today I want that you start solving this other one with the same approach uh, in order to reinforce the concept of the lump heat capacity approach. So let's recall then the formulations. Uh, in order to solve this problem, we need to predict the time of death. A person was found dead at 5 p.m. in a room whose temperature is 20 Celsius. The temperature of the body is measured to be 25 Celsius when found, and the heat transfer coefficient is estimated to be 8 watt meter square Kelvin. Modeling the body as a 30 centimeter diameter, 1.70 meter long cylinder, estimate the time of death of that person. Um, we will need some extra information, right, to get the biot number, like the K value, the thermal conductivity, right? Uh, so, in order to do that, we are going to approximate the body to be water. Um, so, we are going to read the properties of water. Why? Because the average human body is 72% water by mass. So, we can assume that the, bo the body to have the properties of water at the average temperature of 37, that is the normal body temperature, and 25, that is the body measured temperature. Um, so it would be 31 Celsius. So we have to go to tables and read the properties of water for 31 Celsius because we are approximating the human body as being water, just only water. So the K value is going to be 0.617 for water at 31 Celsius, the density 996 kilograms cubic meter and the CP 4178 joule kilogram Celsius. The first thing to do would be to calculate the biot number to determine if we can approximate as a lump heat capacity system. As you can see from my calculation there, very important, we are treating the body as a cylinder. So what is the characteristic length of a cylinder? The radius over two, right? So then the biot number is going to be 0.97, which is bigger than 0.1. Um, then we can say that this is not a lump heat capacity system or that the lump heat capacity is not applicable. However, I want that you solve anyway this problem as a lump heat capacity approach uh, to get a rough estimate of the time of death. So I got 13.2 hours. So the person died about 13 hours before the body was found. So the time of death was around 4 a.m. You see, I didn't do the calculation here of the volume of the surface area of the cylinder because that's the definition of characteristic length, right? So I just replaced uh, R over two value here instead of doing the whole volume surface area calculation for a cylinder. And then what I do also in order to avoid any complication or any mistake, I write typically here by side all the temperatures I'm using in the definition of the dimensionless temperatures. Um, this is because we are now working with three temperatures. We are not working only with two, right? We are working with three temperatures. Um, so in order to avoid any confusion in the definition, I typically write them here. Once you gain more practice, you will, or I mean, it's up to you, uh, but once you get more practice, you will find this very easy to do. But in the meantime, uh, in the meantime, um, it would be helpful if you just write all your temperatures just by side of your definition of um, dimensionless temperature. 
So remember, this is an approximation because we decide to treat it as a lump heat capacity approach. But later, once we go through all the methods, we are going to solve a problem using all the methods we have available. So you can see that lump heat capacity approach is a very simple idealization, but at the end, it can help us to come up with very reasonable, accurate uh, solutions. So it's very, it's very useful. Um, so let's move to the next approach. So we are still evaluating unsteady conduction, right? And what are we covering in this lecture? Well, we are going to cover two different approaches to solve problems when dealing with unsteady conduction. And the first way to, or the first approach to solve would be considering our problem as a semi-infinite region. Uh, if we are considering our geometry or process or um, problem as a semi-infinite region, we have two main boundary conditions or two main uh, cases. The first one is the one with constant surface temperature and the second one is the convection being the convection the most common one, right? Because we typically expose our solids to a fluid interface, right? We do that too much in pipes, in pumps, in reactors, etc. Uh, then we will be covering temperature response charts or Hessler charts. And we are going to revise these charts for plates, cylinders, and spheres that are the three geometries we have been evaluating so far in this course for conduction and convection, right? Um, so let's start first by defining a semi-infinite region. So what is a semi-infinite region or a semi-infinite solid? Well, it's a solid that extends to infinity in all but one direction. So we can identify only one surface, okay? Um, so we can have different boundary conditions existing, but at the end, we will consider in only one direction. So that's a simplification to make our unsteady state problem being 1D, right? 1D, unsteady state. So if this surface should change because of the change in the outside conditions, it will undergo transient 1D conduction. Why? Because we are extending two, two directions, right, to infinity right, to make it to infinity. So we can say only in one direction we are going to move. And just imagine the case of a cylinder. In a cylinder, if I, can, if I say it's a cylinder of infinite length, right, I'm going to evaluate only the radial direction and it becomes a 1D transient problem, right? That's a big assumption we will be doing here. Uh, so just moving in 1D to simplify stuff. So let's look at the first case when evaluating uh, these semi-infinite regions. And the first case would be to having constant surface temperature. And in this case, the surface is totally changed to a new temperature T naught. So for this case, this will be the equation that will help us to evaluate a semi-infinite region that is suddenly changed to a new temperature T naught where this is the error function, and this comes from probability theory. Uh, so we need to calculate all this chunk, error function of x over two square root alpha t, and we all this chunk, all this term is x in your table 44 in your crate book. So we have to calculate all these together and go and find the error function for all these term in your table 44 in the crate book. Also, if you have a calculator that um, deals with probability and graphs, you might have the error function there, okay? So that's the other way to do it. Um, and very important, what is this alpha? Is the thermal diffusivity, and I put here the definition for you, is K over CP rho. And it's a property of a material that reflects the ability to conduct, right, in the numerator, to its, um, to the, uh, to its ability to store, store thermal energy. So conduct towards uh, or compared to, um, to storage. Uh, thermal diffusivity, I define it, error function, you need to use appendix uh, A to determine table 44 grade book. T is the temperature at a distant X from the surface at a time T. Ti is the initial surface. 
temperature to no new temperature of the surface. Remember, we are suddenly changing the surface to a new temperature. T is time and X is the distance from the surface. So as always, we are going to solve a problem so you can see how to use this equation. And um, I uh, require that you are a little bit patient. Uh, the way I'm going to uh, present all the methods is as follows. So we went to lump heat capacity. Now we are going to semi-infinite regions. Then we go through Hiller charts. And at the end, I will give you gen general guidelines of how to choose one method over the other. Okay, so at this point, you might going to start asking yourself when I know I'm going to solve as a semi-infinite region or as a lump heat capacity approach. So please wait until I present the three methods and then we go through general guidelines that will help you to decide which method to use. Let me present you, this is your table for 44 in the crate book. So these you have it there, available in your book. And this is the X that I was talking about here. X is all this chunk. Okay, so all this chunk is X in table 44. And then we have an X, and then we can read the error function for that X that we are going to put in this term, and we can get just the temperature that is missing, right? So let's use the, this equation then to solve for a semi-infinite region. Uh, so we have a thick slab of pure iron that is initially at uniform temperature of zero Celsius. The surface of the the surface temperature of the slab is then suddenly changed to 60 Celsius. What is the temperature at a depth of three centimeters in the slab after one minute? So I put here the properties of iron for you because you need those properties to uh, get the X the X um, chunk, the X term, right? To go then to our table 44 in the crate and calculate the error function of that X. So first thing to do is to calculate the X and then go to your table 44 in the crate book to rate, read the error function for that X and finally get the temperature of the slab at a depth of three centimeters after one minute. So as you can see, we want to know the temperature at 0 0.03 meters and 60 seconds. Uh, we have an initial temperature of zero Celsius, uh, surface temperature of 60 Celsius. And since we will be using the error function table 44, we need to first calculate the argument X over two square root alpha T. Uh, right, so it's what I'm doing here and we got a value of 0.456. So we need to get the error function of that X value of 0.456. Uh, however, we need to interpolate because this value falls between two entries in the error function table. So if you go to your table, 4056 is going to fall between these two values. This is our X value, we got 4056. So we are in between these two, so we need to interpolate to get the right value for the error function for that 4066. Um, so I got 0.4337. Again, if uh, you don't want to interpolate, there are calculators that um, have the error function included. Um, also, as we will see in the next problem, um, there's mini tools in, if you just Google mini tools, you can get the error function. So you just put the error function of the number and you will have the error function of X. So we have the error function. Uh, we can go to our main equation and get T, the temperature at a depth of three centimeters after one minute out of it, right? Uh, we know all the values. We know Ti is zero Celsius, T naught is 60. So we are just missing T out of there. So, so I will give you then the final. So this is the error function that we just calculate. We have the dimensionless temperature definition. So we can get the temperature of the slab at a depth of 30 centimeters after 60 seconds is 33.98 Celsius. 
So let's look at the next uh, common case, and the next common case would be convection. And in this case, the surface is suddenly exposed to a fluid with temperature T infinity or T surroundings. Uh, in this case, the calculation becomes a little bit more complex. And uh, error function of X, again, X is the same argument like in the previous case for suddenly change of a new temperature is X over two square root a thermal diffusivity T or time. And um, just be aware that that X means that, okay? I put it here for you. And again, this argument is the one that we have in table 44 to go and calculate the error function. Um, so for the error function, use table 44 or calculator if your calculator have available the error function. Uh, t is the temperature at a distant x from the surface at a time t. t infinity or t surroundings is the fluid temperature. ti is the initial temperature of the surface. h is the heat transfer coefficient. Since now we are dealing with a convection boundary, right? We need to uh, introduce the h value, the heat transfer coefficient. t is time and x is the distance from the surface. So this will be the formula that we will be employed to solve an unsteady conduction problem if we are assuming a semi-infinite region um, with a convection boundary. So if you want to take note of the formula because as always, we are going to solve a problem so you can see how to apply the formula. So let's solve a problem then when we suddenly expose a semi-infinite region to a fluid at temperature T surroundings or T infinity. So we will have, uh, in this case, a thick slab of stone aggregate concrete, and it's an initial surface temperature of 30 Celsius. Suddenly, the surface of the slab is washed uh, by a steady flow of 10 Celsius water. Assuming a heat transfer coefficient or an H value of 400 watt meter square Kelvin, what is the temperature of the concrete slab at a depth of one centimeter after 20 minutes? And I have the K value there for you and also the thermal diffusivity for the concrete aggregate. Um, we have given Ti, T initial is 30 Celsius, right? The surroundings, that is the water temperature is 10 Celsius, and we have the H value of 400 watt meter square Kelvin. So we want to know what is the temperature at 0 0.01 meters and 1200 seconds. So again, uh, the strategy is the same, get the X parameter or the X term, right? in order to get the error function. And um, as always, I calculate chunk by chunk in the equation before putting the whole thing, because I think that's the best way to track any possible mistake or typo. So here, as you can see, I'm calculating term by term before substituting the values in the big equation um, in order to check uh, each term individually. So I calculate the uh, X term, right? Um, that appears twice. We have twice this uh, chunk that we need to check for the error function. Then I calculate all the other dimensionless terms before substituting in the big equation. Um, and then finally, I put everything in the uh, dimensionless temperature equation. So once you have all the dimensionless terms and all term by term, uh, you substitute in the big equation. So I have it here. I use miniwebtool.com to calculate the error function uh, to avoid interpolation in from the table. Um, so also if your calculator has the error function, just use that. Um, so if you can go to mini web tool, you just put the error function of the whole number, 7.23 in this case, because here we have to add one term, right? An error function of 0.1487. So 
So I got at the end that the dimensionless temperature equals 0 0.1665. Then uh, we take out T out of this dimensionless equation, right? We remember that Ti equals 30 Celsius and T surroundings to infinity 10 Celsius. So we get finally a temperature of 13.3 of the concrete slab at a depth of one centimeters after 20 minutes. So we evaluate now lump heat capacity approach, semi-infinite region approach, so we have a third one to solve problems at unsteady state conduction. Um, and this is the use of temperature response charts or Hessler charts. And um, these kind of charts help us to determine unsteady state temperatures for plates, cylinders, and spheres that we, we expose suddenly to a fluid at a temperature T infinity or T surroundings. Um, why? Well, because the most common boundary condition we deal as engineers is the convective boundary condition, right? That's why someone took the task of developing these simple charts for us for these three common geometries when we expose them to a fluid. Um, and uh, very important about the plate, we will assume that we will have an infinite plate in order to evaluate plate that we suddenly expose to a fluid. Okay, so uh, we will have an infinite width and height, but finite thickness of 2L. But since we are exposing both surfaces to the same boundary condition, we can split the plate in two halves and only analyze one half for thermal symmetry. So that's the way we do it. We evaluate only half thickness of the plate because of this thermal symmetry. Okay, that's convention, that's the way it is done. Um, in the case of the infinite uh, cylinder, as we already discussed, we consider that it has an infinite length. So we just consider the temperature changes in the radial direction, right? We are doing our problems, 1D problems to simplify, 1D unsteady state conduction, right? And in the case of the sphere, also we are going to consider only conduction along the radial direction only. So those are the simplifications that lead to, ana to the analysis of these um, geometries in 1D direction only, right? Assumptions were done to um, make these 1D bodies. So that's why I put this square here in purple so you don't forget about that. Again, for the plate, half of the thickness because of thermal symmetry for the cylinder and the sphere, the radial direction is the one that becomes important. Uh, there are certain parameters that we need to uh, calculate in order to read these this charts, this temperature response chart or Hewlett chart. Um, so we need to calculate the Bayer number and also you will see the Fourier number in these charts. The Fourier number involves the time variable and is when the time takes picture in this chart. This charts give us approximate analytical results for a plate, cylinder, and a sphere in a graphical form, and they are accurate for Fourier number bigger or equal than 0.2. So uh, very important, when dealing with plates, this, this is going to be, this L is the plate half thickness because of the thermal symmetry that we already discussed. So then let's look at the Hessler charts and you have them in your textbook. And that's why you will need the textbook for the exam because you will need to read these charts during the exam time. So these charts are a must for the exam and the next homework. So we have uh, the Hitler chart for an infinite plate here and it's figure 319 or 39, I cannot see properly, 39 in your textbook is the Hitler chart for an infinite plate for the center temperature. We have also for off-center temperature for a plate. And we have also total heat transfer between an infinite plate and the surrounding fluid, 3.9. So we have three plots 
expert geometry. One that can help us to evaluate center temperature, second one off center temperature, and the third one total heat transfer between the infinite plate and the surrounding fluid. So three plots. Okay, uh, so you need to locate them. Also be sure, a very common mistake I have seen, double check you are reading for the right geometry because if you choose the cylinder for solving a problem of plate, the problem is going to be completely wrong. I have seen that. So be sure, double check, triple check that you are choosing the right plot for the right geometry.